Hello good people of the internet and welcome back to Vape School. Such a stupid name but I couldn't think of anything better. Anyway, today we are going to talk about what is the best atomizer for you. Now there are essentially three different types of atomizers with a few subtypes. Those three types are tank, drip tank and dripper. So, I mean, you can see how they're kind of related. There are subtypes like a uh, sub -ohm tank and a uh, squonk dripper, but the three main types are kind of the important bits, and then you can start getting fiddly after that. Now, I'm going to give you a very brief definition of every type of atomizer and then run down a list of pros and cons so you can figure out which one is the best one for you to get. First, let's get into tanks. Tanks come in two types. You get rebuildable tanks and you get non-rebuildable tanks. And that, that sounds like really simple, but uh, it's kind of a key point because most people will start on a tank because they don't have to build their own coils. Then as they get a little further along, sometimes they'll want to stick with the tank and they'll want to, you know, build their own coils. So they'll get a rebuildable tank which is an RTA. After that comes the RDTA or Rebuildable Dripping Tank Atomizer. Now these don't come with pre-built coils, so they're purely rebuildable. In fact, everything except a sub -ohm tank is going to be a rebuildable atomizer. RDTAs have gone through a lot of variation over the years, but the most common type these days is something called the Genesis style, which is basically an atomizer deck on top with a tank underneath it, much like this V-God Trick Tank Pro. So you can see there's a deck, and underneath it is a little tank and you just the wicks are really long so they kind of feed in there that is what is called a genesis style rdta non-genesis style rdtas is something like the the dragon ball by fumi tech basically an rdta is anything that works as a dripper and a tank at the same time so it has a juice well somewhere where you keep so many milliliters of juice but you can also drip flavor directly onto the coils. That is in fact what makes an RDTA. Then you get your drippers and these are probably the simplest devices in terms of design. They are very simply a deck that you can put coils in and then it doesn't have a juice well of any sort. You just kind of drip straight onto the wick or straight onto the coils and then vape until it's dry and then drip again. Now let's get into the pros and cons of each different type of atomizer and we can work out what is best for each different type of vapor. Let's start with a tank. Now the pros of a tank are quite simple actually. They're very convenient because you know you've got all your juice right there. You don't need to be re-dripping all the time. And in the case of a sub ohm tank, they, the factory will often just make the coils. So you can just kind of screw them in and fill it up and you're good to go. I mean, it is really the easiest way to vape by far. There are four main drawbacks of a tank for me. Uh, one is that they tend to leak. Uh, this is often down to how you wick them. Uh, it's, it's, it's just a, a thing because if you submerge your coils completely, you're essentially just gonna be drinking hot liquid. And if you don't get them just the right amount of dry and wet, in a chamber surrounded by liquid, it's it. they're tricky is the thing really. And that's actually the second drawback is they're really difficult to wick just right. You either over wick them and burn your cotton and then it tastes awful, or you under wick them and they oversaturate and they leak like straight through your drip tip and you wind up like drinking hot e-juice and nobody wants that. Because they have very large glass components, they're also much more prone to breaking than most other types of atomizers. So you kind of have to be a bit more delicate with them. And and the final and most important thing to me is that tanks tend to have the worst flavor. More on that later. Tank lovers, just calm down. Don't kill me yet. Let's move on to the RDTA. It's a very interesting atomizer style and I can see what people were trying to do. Marrying the convenience of a tank with uh, what would essentially be the flavor of a dripper. I don't think they quite got it right, but we'll get to that. We'll get to that. First, the pros. The first big pro is that an RDTA is more convenient than a dripper because it does in fact have its own tank. In the case of Genesis style RDTAs, which is, you know, the most popular design style, they are essentially RDAs at the top, which means that you're gonna get something like an RDA's flavor but you're still gonna have the convenience of the tank. So that's a big pro for the RDTA. All RDTAs are rebuildable because it would be impossible to make a pre-built coil for a device like that. But because of that, all of its problems, all of its cons are related to how weird and difficult it is to build the appropriate coil and wick for an RDTA. Let me get into that. First of all, in the case of Genesis RDTAs, the wicking is really difficult to get right. If you wick it too thin, 
then uh, the liquid is often just going to spurt up onto the deck and it's going to leak and it's going to bleh, it's just not fun especially if you carry your vape in your pocket and the way to get around that leaking is to pack your cotton in really really tight but that often creates a vacuum. Now in some odd ETAs, they get around this by making little air holes in the deck, but I find that they often don't work well, and a vacuum essentially means that your, your juice isn't gonna go anywhere, it's not gonna go into the cotton, it's just gonna kinda sit in your tank and steep, which is not great. Also, if you wick really, really tightly, then uh, there's a much higher chance that your, your cotton is going to burn because it'll get dry over time from the outside, and eventually your coil will be burning dry cotton while there's still wet cotton in the center unless you've got a super super low build uh more on that later uh and it's just it's it's finicky it's it's tricky to get exactly right and i don't find that the flavor you get out of an rdta is ever really worth all that hassle now we get into drippers which is kind of the gold standard in vaping if i'm honest everyone who vapes seriously tends to own at least one dripper and there's a reason for that they can't really leak unless you throw way too much juice in them because it is literally just you saturating the cotton they have easily the best flavor of any atomizer style. There is a huge variety of different design styles, sizes, deck builds, all, all that stuff. Drippers just have it in spades. They have so, so much to offer. And because you're dripping ostensibly small amounts of e-liquid onto your coils and your cotton, you can switch flavors on the fly, really, which you can't do with tanks or RDTAs at all. I mean, you kind of can with RDTAs, but it's almost never going to work the way you want it to. It's in but there are downsides to drippers. Just because their flavor and clouds are so epic doesn't mean that they are perfect. I mean, the constant re-dripping is the number one source why a lot of people are like, I don't want to drip because you don't also want to have to carry your bottle of flavor with you. I fully understand that. Um, for most people, the flavor trade-off is worth it, but for some, you need that extra convenience of just having your flavor ready to vape rather than squirting it in all the time, I understand. So yes, strippers are the least convenient by about a mile. There are so many options that it can be very daunting to actually buy one because you don't know if you're making the right choice, and the, you can't really test with someone else's dripper because everybody's got their own configuration. And that's another thing. It takes a lot of expertise to get your dripper or a dripper to work exactly the way you want it to. So it really takes a lot of investment of time and energy to, you know, get the most out of a dripper. And for some people, that's just too much of an ask. Some people just want to vape and go. And I fully get that too. It comes down to how you want to vape. Uh, do you want the most flavor or do you want the most convenience? Or do you want something somewhere in the middle? Uh, it, depending on how you answer that question, it really makes it a lot easier to figure out what kind of atomizer you need. If you're all about the convenience, get a sub -ohm tank that has pre-installed coils that you can just screw in and you can vape away, ready to go in like five minutes. If you want ultimate flavor explosion and you don't mind putting in the extra work to make your vape the best vape, then yeah, you're gonna get a dripper. That's just, that's gonna happen. Or if you're a fence sitter who's somewhere in between, you know, you want better flavor than a tank, but you know, the constant re-dripping and all that hassle is just too much for you, then you're probably gonna get an RDTA and just learn how to wick it right. If you learn how to wick an RDTA right, they're actually pretty damn good. Obviously nothing I've said is a hard and fast rule. There are plenty of devices out there that completely break science in terms of how they work. There are tanks that give off better flavors than some RDAs. There are RDTAs that actually have good flavor and don't leak constantly. There are drippers with terrible flavor. These things happen. So the most important thing really is to do your research, to watch videos like this one, and to figure out what kind of vape you are, what kind of vapor you are, and what level of quality versus convenience you want. And then once you figured that out, you kind of, you go online and you find out, all right, so this RDTA is good for so-and-so, or this RD RDA is life-changing in terms of its flavor, or this tank never leaks. So there are plenty of options and there are plenty of ways to go about finding what the right atomizer is for you. Now, as far as mods are concerned, that's going to be the subject of another video. But anyway, I really hope you guys enjoyed this. I hope it's been helpful. If you like the video, please like the video, uh, share it so that other people can figure out what type of atomizer they need. 
But that is going to be all from me. Thank you again, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.